in the previous lesson, we introduced the terms retrieval strength and storage strength. And we saw how they sort of mapped onto our understanding of the brain. And we answered the questions, what happens when we study and why can we remember information that we studied? In this lesson, we'll look at why do we forget? Now, in trying to understand why we forget things or some things faster than others, there are some theoretical possibilities. It could be that we've lost the memory trace. The memory trace has decayed. And we've, we've seen in the hippocampus, there are limits on storage in the hippocampus and interference from other memories can interfere with previous memories. We saw neurogenesis in the hippocampus. New neurons integrating into the neural networks can disrupt prior memories. And we saw synaptic resetting during sleep is gonna weaken synapses, again, disturbing memory traces. And all of these were factors that make hippocampal memory traces uh, decay rather quickly. So hippocampal memory traces are vulnerable to these forms of interference. But cortical memory traces are thought to have slow decay. This is one of the points of, of doing system consolidation to store information up in the larger capacity cortex with slower rates of decay. So if we think about forgetting, it's likely that, that the, the loss of the memory trace itself in the cortex is not a big factor. Rather, psychologists argue that what's happening when we uh, forget things is we're losing retrieval strength. If we don't use the information for a long time, we lose access. And we'll call this the theory of disuse. Now, one way to get a handle on the relationship between retrieval strength and storage strength is to consider this kind of graph. Here we have on the y-axis rate of loss of retrieval strength and the x-axis storage strength. Psychologists argue that storage strength determines the rate of loss of retrieval strength. If we store information uh, very well in the cortex, multiple consolidation events, so we have high storage strength, we will have a, a low rate of loss of retrieval strength. If we don't store the information well in the cortical memory system, we're going to have a high rate of loss of retrieval strength. It, it's perhaps easier if we rewrite this y-axis as rate of forgetting. So disuse does not lead to a decay in the storage strength of the material. We don't think that the cortical memory traces really decay very quickly. They're pretty stable. Rather, disuse causes a decrease in retrieval strength, the current accessibility of the information. So forgetting is a loss of access. If we don't uh, store information very well in the cortical memory system, we're going to have a high rate of forgetting. If we do lots of consolidation and we do lots of synaptic plasticity in the cortex, so we have high storage strength for the memory trace, then we'll have a low rate of forgetting. So for psychologists, why do we forget? We have lost retrieval strength either due to disuse or a failure to establish high storage strength in the first place. Let's take a look at that, that second one first and see what that looks like on our brain. You'll recall, so here we're considering forgetting as a failure to consolidate. You'll recall, why do we even do the system consolidation? Well, because the memory traces in the hippocampus are vulnerable to decay. Interference from new learning, interference from new neurons, interference from synaptic resetting. But if we don't successfully do system consolidation, then we're going to be left with weak memory traces. Remember, system consolidation is that communication between the hippocampus and the cortical memory traces. If we don't do that system consolidation, we're not strengthening connections between the cortical neurons that are allocated to the memory trace. And so we're going to be left with weak memory traces in the cortex. Now, the hippocampal uh, memory trace might be strong for a while, but remem remember it's temporary. That's going to de decay quickly due to all those kinds of interference that we talked about a mo moment ago. So if we fail to do system consolidation or we don't do it enough, we're going to be left with weak memory traces and poor retrieval for that information in the cortex. If we think about forgetting as a loss of access, here the idea is we, uh, we have uh, undergone successful system consolidation. So we have strong cortical memory traces and they're in a strong network in our semantic memory, but we've lost access as a result of disuse. So it's not that the cortical memory traces have disappeared. In fact, scientists think these memory traces have a slow rate of decay. It's rather we're losing access. The retrieval systems are losing access to that stored information. 
And one reason to think these cortical memory traces have a slow decay rate is that when we relearn that same information, we can again establish high retrieval strength. So we can quickly regain access to that from, uh, information in a reliable and fast way. And that, that suggests that the memory traces were there. So these are strong cortical memory traces, but what happened with disuse is we lost access, and that access can be regained relatively quickly with relearning.